Can a Christian asking a Mormon to read the Gospel of John make a difference? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us again. And today, and for the next week or two, we're going to be introduced to just a wonderful couple. And to begin with, we have Cindy Allred here to share her story. And thank you for coming and sharing. And you're quite new out of the church, is that true? Yes, very new. <laughs> Less than a year at this point. My goodness, but it's been quite the journey, hasn't it? Yes. Well, we are, as we do, would like to start with a little bit about your background. Where are you from and what's your, what's your little bit of history? Where were you born? And... I was born in Caldwell, Idaho. Okay. And uh, I'm the youngest of my family, uh, quite significantly younger. I had teenage siblings when I was born. Mm, that can be challenging, huh? <laughs> right. Um, but uh, they were planning on me. I wasn't a surprise. Uh -huh. and, and my parents made a big point of always saying, uh, this is our bonus. <laughs> so I always was uh, very much loved. I bet. And um, I felt the love from my parents and from my siblings, too, growing up. And then I always looked up to them and... Uh, watched how they lived their lives and they uh, set a good example I suppose they and, set great examples uh, were they LDS were they where's your family born? our our family is all LDS okay and um, in fact you have quite a background uh, I believe on one side of the family right the parents grandparents great-grandparents and beyond so my um, through my mother's line were descended from the brother of Joseph Smith Sr. His name was Silas. Oh my goodness. How many brothers so, did Joseph Sr. have, do you know? You know, I don't remember exactly how many. But at least Silas was there. And, right. And you mm -hmm. descend from him. Right. So you've done a lot of family history, did you? Well, I haven't done did? a lot, but um, there's been a lot done in my family. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's always one of those things that I needed to work into my schedule. Sure. And I, I had very <laughs> little, little time to schedule. do it, but I, it was always there nagging at me, you yeah. need to do more. You so you, I more. guess you did the active things for, for young people and mutual, primary, mutual, and right. all that stuff. Um, and I attended primary in Caldwell. And something interesting that um, has come to mind as I've been on this journey is that in primary, we studied the New Testament. That was our you course of that. study. Right. And we each received our own New Testament, a little larger print than usual, so it was easy for children to read. Wow. And uh, we went through the entire New Testament. We had our little red pencils, and we marked scriptures, and we really did study about Jesus. Wow, that's interesting. I think that, I guess that foundation has been helpful. That foundation you. was very meaningful for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then later you go to seminary, I guess? Yes. I okay. uh, graduated from four years of seminary. Okay. Would have taken more if more <laughs> years were offered. Um, and then after graduation from high school, I attended Rick's College. And um, I took probably more religion classes than I needed to take just because that's what that's what the program was. And did you study the Bible even more at this point or did you start I mean I'm sure you read the Book of Mormon as well and mostly of... it was um, Doctrine and Covenants and Book of Mormon a little bit of Bible but it seemed like each time we would study the Bible, it would be mostly the verses that supported things in the Doctrine and Covenants. And so mm -hmm. uh, it was cross-referenced. It wasn't really that. a study of the Bible as much as just supporting, like you say, the Doctrine of Mormonism. Or right. Doctrine yeah, and it covenants. was principles of Mormonism yeah. with um, 
supporting documentation yeah. that had been pulled from the Bible. Now, do you, uh, I guess you'd always planned on marrying in the temple? Absolutely. Is that for sure? No and other place to marry. Marry a return missionary and all that stuff. Right. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and um, was encouraged never to date anyone who wasn't marriage material. <laughs> so I didn't. You didn't, huh? No. Nope. So what, how old were you when you started, when you met your husband? Well, we met very young. Did you? Because I was 12 and he was 13. Oh my goodness, in the same ward? Yes, and this was in Rexburg, Idaho. Uh -huh. uh, my dad passed away when I was 12. Oh. My mother wanted to move to her hometown. And uh, so we did, we moved to Rexburg. And um, during the first month or so that I was there, Dave was taking a shortcut through the backyards and most people in Rexburg at that time did not have fences, so it was very common to cut Kids through backyards. Kids running through the yards. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was either taking clothes off the clothesline or putting some on. And uh, he showed up in the backyard. That's how we met. And did you have any sense that this would be a, a lifelong companion or...? at that point? <laughs> um, no, he was just a just cute there. guy and we made friends and um, oh, that's fun. a group of uh, kids would get together each evening we, with our uh, baseballs, mitts and bats and uh, we'd play ball at a school that was close by, an mm. elementary school. And um, all the kids in the neighborhood that were available would show up oh. and we would just have a great time playing ball. Wow. Well, eventually it gets a little more serious. Was that during uh, high school or uh, after high school? Um, it was during high school. Yeah. Um, but we did hold hands in junior high <laughs> sometimes. You remember that, huh? Right. Yeah. He was my first formal date. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't yet quite 16. So when he asked me out, I said, she won't let me go. I'm <laughs> sure of it. And he persuaded me. It took quite a lot of persuading <laughs> for him to persuade me that it, I could risk asking her because I didn't want to make her mad by asking something I knew the answer was no. Mom would be mad at that. Huh? Right. Well, anyway, so you end up uh, going together for a while, I guess. And he yep. goes on a mission. Yep. We'll learn next um, time. But We uh, dated, and uh, then he served a mission in Brazil. Right. And, so then, and while he was gone on his mission, I was um, studying at Rick's College. Okay. So I graduated from two years of Rick's College. It was a two-year college at that time. Yeah. Um, and then he came home from his mission. Okay, and then what And that happened? was in 1975. <laughs> was it? And he proposed, um, it was just a couple of days after he got home. <laughs> He'd been thinking about you a lot, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. What a love story. That's just awesome. Yeah. That's neat. So that was in May he proposed. Yeah. And uh, we got married in August of 1975. Wow. So Idaho Falls Temple. In the temple. In right. The, and that was a live session then, you were telling me earlier. Right. It was a live session. Yeah. What did you think of that when you went through You know, it was, uh, of course, I had no idea what to expect, um, but it, it was very different than what I could have imagined. Yeah. And um, it was puzzling. <laughs> Uh, but I looked around me, and there's all my extended family, and um, my mom and my brother and his wife, and my sisters and their husbands, and my aunts and uncles, <laughs> and they're like all delighted <laughs> and joyful. And this and is happy. <laughs> this is just great, well, and it's what we do. <laughs> so I thought, well, I, I guess I'll figure out what's so great about it. It didn't seem so great, but. Um, yeah. I put on the happy face and said, yeah, sure, here we go. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you raise fa a family and you, I guess, have children and you're just active in the church. and Right, for... very active. Um, all, of, all of the callings that came our way, 
we accepted them. Um, Dare I read this list? I just think it was so impressive that, I mean, this is what, uh, what Cindy's done. Of course, married in the temple. She was Relief Society counselor, secretary, chorister, Relief Society teacher, visiting teacher, teaching coordinator, young women's president, secretary, teacher, primary president, counselor, secretary, teacher, chorister, baptismal coordinator, taught almost every class in primary, ward music chairman, choir director, librarian, stake, Relief Society counselor, and homemaking leader. Right. Wow, you're, you're a bishop's delight. You were a person that just didn't say no, did you? No, because we, we wanted to please God. We wanted to do the yeah. right thing. Um, we had three children. Uh, for a while, we lived in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. We were there for oh. six years. Wow. And, um, of course, that was the mission field, and um, we were delighted to be there. Dave served as a counselor in the bishopric yeah. during that time. There just isn't any question in our minds, your mind, that the church was, wasn't true, right? I mean, it was just, it, no was just question. Our, it was our whole culture, it was our life. Yeah, it, it was, was everything. everything we knew. Every decision we made was made because of our membership in the church. It was the most important thing yeah. ever to us. So you get back to Idaho, do you, or you, where do you go from Oklahoma? Uh, from Oklahoma, we came to Utah, oh. and um, I kind of wondered about that at the time. Uh, but initially, Dave wanted to um, extend his schooling, and he got it set up to go to BYU. And we'd had our third baby at that time. And uh, so he was about two weeks old when we made the move. Nothing worked out well at all. Hmm. E everything just... Uh, and coming back to Utah? You fell to pieces. Really? Everything that he had uh, lined up for his schooling at BYU, his work, uh, the place we were going to live, e everything just dissolved. And... Um, we kept trying to make it work, but it just was a mess. And uh, I was overwhelmed with three little children. Sure. And uh, felt so much stress about it. And that was the first time we'd ever been in a ward and we hadn't been welcomed with omen open arms. And was this in Orem, in Utah County? It was actually Pleasant Grove. Okay. And um, I've often said since, it wasn't very pleasant. <laughs> Not Pleasant Grove. <laughs> no, I think they were overwhelmed with too many married students and... Um, um, BYU students and right. stuff. Right. Yeah. And uh, they just didn't... Okay, get in line. <laughs> yeah. You know. One of the crowd. And it didn't feel good. Yeah. How long did you live there? Uh, it was about six weeks, I think. Oh, is that all? Right. <laughs> then where did you go? Um, I said to Dave one night when I was completely just distressed over it. I'd been to the grocery store and, and no one would even look at me. Oh. And I, I that just, just had hurt funny, my feelings, I think. Funny feeling, huh? Yeah. yeah I didn't feel oh. right about it. We weren't supposed to be there. Of course, it didn't mean the church wasn't true, of course. No. I mean, the church was still true. No, but, but I just felt we weren't supposed to yeah. be there. So I said to him, <clears throat> we can't stay. And the next day, he flew back to Oklahoma, to Tulsa, and uh, he met with the people he had worked with there. Mm. He got his, not his old job back because they had filled it, but they made a position for him. Oh, they liked him so much. Yeah. That's neat. So they made a position for him. So he got a job and bought a house in one day. Oh my goodness. How long did you live there then? Uh, then we were back there, let's see. I think that was about four years. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And after Oklahoma. And again, you're active in the church this whole time. Very active. Raising the family yep. properly and all that right. stuff. So mm -hmm. then what happens? You. Um, we had a business and the oil industry tanked out during that time. Our business wasn't oil related, mm. but um, all of our customers were. 
Oh. And um, so we had the feeling that we needed to move back to Utah. Wow. And it was good that we did because it gave our children the opportunity to um, have some time with their grandparents. They were here in Utah. Huh? Right. So we lived yeah. in Brigham City. Oh, and uh, our children went to school in Brigham City. And um, our, they all but the last one graduated. The, the two oh, older good. ones graduated from Box Elder. Okay. Well, gosh, so we're, uh, again, still active in the church. And what year would this yes. be that you, when did you leave Brigham City? Let's for see. Um, we lived in Brigham City from 1985 until um, our daughter graduated high school in 1996. Okay, so you were there till then. And right. Anything mm -hmm. particularly about the church come up that uh, ever challenged your faith or thought process? Nothing, um, nothing that was ever a concern to me. From early on, from childhood, whenever I heard that there was such a thing as polygamy, that didn't set well. <laughs> In fact, it just made me sick to my stomach, any mm. thoughts of it. And, of course, both sides of my family had, had, had been involved in polygamy because they were very um, active and diligent in their yeah. belief in the church. and um, So they practiced polygamy so, yeah. dutifully. And, yeah. yeah, they did. So my uh, superhero was always Wilford Woodruff <laughs> because, because he was the prophet that issued the manifesto that there was no more polygamy. <laughs> he was your hero. <laughs> yeah, my superhero. Really, I you, would always say that. He's my favorite prophet. What did you think about the idea that we would live it later or in, in heaven? Well, in the celestial kingdom. I, I was always told it it won't it won't come about and if it does, you'll feel good about it. Mm. And you, I was like, no, <laughs> I will not feel good about it. And I had told Dave <laughs> If this ever comes down, that that's what we have to do, I'm out. Wow. There's, there's no way I'm going <laughs> to... You're not even going to wait for the explanation. Mm -mm. <laughs> You're just out. No, nope, I'm well, not fun. sharing my husband with Well, supposedly someone. the wife has, the first wife has the right of refusal, but... Right. I don't, that didn't work out I too would, well for Emma Smith, but... <laughs> right. I've learned that yeah. since... Well, so tell us about your journey here a little bit. What uh, what kind of got you thinking? We started out telling telling everyone that uh, a Christian had, uh, had challenged you to read the Gospel of John. Is that early right. on in, in well, things? Well, um, I had been uh, this young man's primary teacher, and we had developed a friendship that we had kept going uh, years after. And uh, one day he said to me, read the Gospel of John, just in a very serious tone. And I said, okay, yeah, I'll read the Gospel of John. So I did. And about a week later, then the two of us discussed it, and he told me things he loved about the Gospel of John. And I said things that I loved about the Gospel of John. <laughs> and, and um, you know, then it just, it was very natural and and when was this? And easy. Um, it was about three years ago. Oh, that, that recent then. Or okay. somewhere around three years ago. It wasn't something that I, you know, flagged and said, hey, this is a red letter day or anything. It was yeah. just the normal part of life. You think God was maybe softening your heart a little bit? Or was there any of that going on? Now that I look back. Yeah. I think he was softening my heart. Yeah. Making me ready. Getting ready. Right. So what actually does kind of tip you a little bit? Well, I read the Gospel of John several times because oh. Mark would say, read the Gospel of John. And I'd say, well, we did just read it. Well, read it again. Okay, we would read it again. And, and we kept discussing it. And this went on for about a year or so before anything else showed up.
But one day in the fall of 2017, uh, our youngest son, Spencer, who lives in Las Vegas, uh, he called and said, Mom, I'm preparing this lesson on church history. I'm, I'm doing some research so that I'm ready for it, because if questions come up, he's like us, he's very thorough, and he wanted to be ready to answer any questions. This was questions. a gospel doctrine class? It was Sunday gospel school? doctrine, yeah. right. He was the Sunday school president, but he felt like he shouldn't be asking people to teach <laughs> if he himself wasn't yeah. willing to teach. So he put himself on the rotation. So he was teaching about once a month. Okay. Did he ask you to read along with him, or what happened? No, he said as he was preparing this, he, he came across some conflicting information about history, and he wondered what I thought about it. And so he asked me some questions, and uh, so I gave him the answers that what... I had been taught, what I had taught my children, what I had taught in primary for years. And he said, would it surprise you if the, that's not really what the church is publishing about the history now? <laughs> and I said, well, yes. Yeah. yeah, that would be very surprising. And I said, where have you found this? It kind of made me worried yeah. that he had read something he shouldn't have been reading. Yeah. And we don't do that. No, of course not. No. <laughs> but he sent me a link uh, for the church history essays and said, you know, this was where he'd found the information. And he asked me to, to look into it. Well, I looked at it and saw that there were 13 of those essays. I was really busy. <laughs> I, I was too busy to take time to read all oh, of that. Okay. So I said to him, I'll read two of them. I'll read the first vision, and I'll read the a translation of the Book of Mormon. Because really, if there's problems with those two... Yeah, those are kind of foundational, aren't they? Right. Yeah. Well, everything else is going to hinge on those. Sure. So if there's not problems there, then, you know, everything else can be worked out. So I read the first vision one first, and right away I realized why he was having distress. Things you'd never heard before or considered? Yeah. yeah. I had, I'd not been aware of the various versions of Now, the how is it that you go through seminary, Rick's College Institute classes, you teach and we're taught and sacrament meetings and general conferences and we don't know this stuff? How is that? I don't know. Yeah. Just, that, that was the thing that perplexed me. Yeah. So I went all through that essay and I started comparing it back and forth because I had a whole bunch of church history books and and I I compared all each individual thing and I'm like this is this is not the same what why are they saying this who wrote this does the church uh, do the leaders know that this is out there and it's on LDS.org, of right. course. Yeah. yeah, that was my first thought. Oh, yeah. my goodness, someone has hacked the church website. Oh, did you really? Yeah, yeah. I not, thought for not sure they had. Not that this is official doctrine, but this is uh, somebody had hacked the website. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I was pretty sure that the leaders of the church, the 12 apostles, the first presidency, yeah. I was sure they couldn't know about that. Amazing. Amazing. So did you, you continued studying, thinking, listening? Right. Things? Yes. I dived in deep. I read every essay. I followed every footnote. I, I was just appalled. Was Dave aware of this? You know, he noticed that Spencer and I were talking a lot <laughs> on the phone um, about every day. And uh, we were conferring, and he said, what's up with you and Spencer? And I said, well, 
there's these essays and um, perhaps you would like to join us reading them. <laughs> and his attitude was, no, I'm not reading any essays because clearly I was upset. Yeah. So <laughs> he didn't feel like he needed to get upset. Well, Cindy, gosh, we're almost running out of time here. And one thing I wanted to make sure, you, you had a little verse or some things that you wanted to read uh, from, I your, did. Uh, I from did. your phone there. And because when everything fell apart for me, and I mean everything fell apart, Earl, yeah. it was like an earthquake. And there I was in the middle of a pile of rubble and dust everywhere from the devastation. It's just shocking, isn't it? I, mean, I was just... sobbing my eyes out. And I realized there's nothing left. There's nothing left. Mm. And I, I've never felt so low. And then there was just a very quiet thought that surfaced. And I realized that those ancestors of mine who joined early on in Mormonism, they had been Christians. True. Before they got involved. And they had Bibles and loved Christ. And I said out loud, I'm going to hold on to Jesus for all I'm worth. <laughs> and that was, that was what saved me right there on that spot. I was sinking into the abyss. And so here's, here's my message that comes out of all of it. Give yourself some time to think about what is of value to you. Do you value truth? Do you want to know God and His truth? Don't take my explanation or anyone else's experience over your own thoughtful consideration of truth. Do think deeply. Pray for nothing but the truth and genuinely start trying to grow closer to God and His truth you'll be overwhelmed at the love, mercy, wisdom, and truth you'll find. And it's right here <laughs> in the Bible. It's so beautiful. I appreciate you sharing that. I guess I'm just wondering why it is that Mormons um, don't know their Bible better and why so many that do leave become atheist or just give up on everything. If the only true church isn't true, then they just give up on everything. Why, were, why do you think you were able to, to transition with Jesus this way? I think because I had read the Gospel of John. I think because my parents read the Bible with me as a child um, and because I studied it in primary. I think really did make. deep down, I knew there was something wonderful about the Bible. Yeah. And um, I, I had my doubts about it because of the eighth article of faith as far as it's translated <laughs> don't, correctly. Don't we all? Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's it. And you know, I've learned since reading the Bible exclusively with no cross-references and no other agenda, just reading it as a little child. And really that's what we are. We are little children. Yeah. I say we're baby Christians because we know just a little bit. I wouldn't say that I'm a seasoned Christian by any stretch of the <laughs> imagination. We, we just had to start over from yeah. the first step. 
But it's a joyful journey, isn't it? It's and, so joyful. And there's such a freedom in, in knowing what Jesus did for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. And Right. We, I would have said, we understand grace. As a, as a Mormon, as you would a Mormon. say that. We didn't. No. I didn't understand anything about grace until I started reading it in the Bible with no other oh, without, things. Without the Mormon filter. Right. Yeah. Just, just straight. And now I can't wait to start reading every morning. Is that right? Yes. It's just so beautiful. Yeah. And, and just yesterday, there was a verse that hit me from John. Um, it's chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? And you know, that was always on my mind. God's requiring a lot of work from me, and I was working diligently. So this would say stuff like going to the temple, pay your tithing, and all that. What does right. Jesus say? His answer is so simple. Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. <laughs> That's it. A... That's all. It's so, so beautiful, so simple. Right. Yeah. That's the work. Yeah. There's nothing in there about all these other duties that I, I always felt exhausted, worn out, but I pushed, pushed, pushed to do more. Well, Cindy, thank you so much for sharing your story. And uh, we're going to get a chance, I think, to talk to Cindy a little bit later uh, in, a, in a few more posts or a few more interviews. So, But we really appreciate your sharing that. And... Uh, you're a delightful lady, and and I, I just I'm so grateful that you were able to to bring Jesus along in this journey. Actually, it was Jesus who brought, brought me. me along. I knew you'd say right. that, but <laughs> yeah. But it, it's just so it just seems like it's such a difficult thing for so many LDS to to keep Jesus with them. I'll when tell they leave. you, Earl, I was the least likely candidate <laughs> to walk out of Mormonism, the least likely of anyone I've ever known. I'm probably the least likely. And weren't we proud that we were that way? I was so arrogant. <laughs> Cindy, thank you so much. We'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files. <laughs>